question about the prescription research software by Dr. Neelima Shirsago, ma'am. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much. I'll just uh, share my screen for the PPT. Uh, can you see my screen, please? Yes, ma'am. Please uh, switch to yes. full screen. I'm just making it full screen. Can you see it full screen? Yes, now. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much. And is my audio clear? Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, 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 yes. We can hear you, ma'am. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, at the outset, uh, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Balram Bhargav, uh, Secretary DHR, uh, DG ICMR, uh, and the other uh, dignitaries who are present for this launch, uh, it's a great pleasure and privilege for me to give this uh, brief overview of the prescription research software that is PrescriSoft. This has been developed by the Rational Use of Medicine Centers and the Technical Advisory Group of the National Virtual Center of Clinical Pharmacology, along with the ICMR, National Institute of Medical Statistics. We will all remember COVID-related mucormycosis, which was linked to the inappropriate, that is not as per standard treatment guidelines, use of medicines such as corticosteroids and broad-spectrum antibiotics. This episode has brought in front the importance of prescription research, that is assessing and analyzing prescription, identify if there are any problems with this, and provide inputs for corrective steps. Prescription research does all this, and it also provides us trends across healthcare systems and longitudinally over time. In fact, it reflects the quality of the healthcare system, and it's a mirror, really, of the healthcare system. Thus, under the guidance of Dr. Balram Bhargav, in 2019, the NVCCP National Center and the ICMR National Use of Medicine Centers were established in major medical colleges. These 14 medical colleges spread out all over India captured about 12,000 prescriptions in two years. From various OPDs, community medicine, speciality, etc., Prescription with diagnosis, half of them knew, half of them follow up cases, and these were analyzed and assessed manually. The prescription capture was done with the ethics committee approval and also with the patient's consent. So, using a common protocol and a common CRA form, these were assessed for WHO indicators, such as use for polypharmacy, more than six drugs, fixed dose combination, whether there was an LEM, national list of essential medicine in it or whether there were too many antibiotics injectable, et cetera. These prescriptions were also evaluated for appropriateness. So clinicians, a multidisciplinary RUMC committee and pharmacologists decided by consensus, is a particular prescription, is it as per the standard treatment guidelines and use? If there is a deviation from the standard treatment guidelines, is the deviation acceptable? Maybe something minor or is it unacceptable? Unacceptable, why? Because it can have a potential impact, such as causing ADRs, lack of effect, higher in cost interaction, or even uh, antimicrobial resistance, AMR. But there were some drawbacks in this manual work. What was it? There were variations in recording the medicine names. So like somebody would enter levogen, another person would enter iron and so on. That made aggregation a bit difficult and statistical analysis was limited. That's how we developed this prescription research software. What are its unique features? One, that it is developed in-house. It's built on our previous and others' previous experience and expertise. It incorporates WHO drug dictionary, ICD disease code, and also NLEM. Thus, it allows uh, analysis by disease and drug use because of the uniformity of the data entry. What are its features? We capture drug demograph patient demography. We also prescri capture prescriber details, such as whether they're junior or senior. Details of prescription are captured, drug, dose, route, duration, instruction, et cetera. And then the assessment that is done, is it as per STG? If there is deviation, that is something important is omitted or something wrong is entered, then it is acceptable or not. We also capture the feedback from clinicians for corrective steps. And the statistics and indicators get auto-calculated, which permits the user analysis for himself. And also a super user, like at ICMI headquarters, can have a pan-India 
or sector wise or region wise aggregation analysis and interpretation so what are the statistics that get auto calculated some of the examples here like total prescription as per stg or not whether there are some deviations of uh, omission or commission whether they are acceptable or unacceptable and what is the possible impact being online it's possible for all health sectors with uh, having entered into an mou with icmr to enter data into this software so beside the icmr rumcs which are currently going to be doing it also the prescribing skill scores the participants their assignment can be entered post graduate students of pharmacology can enter primary secondary tertiary healthcare centers uh, especially with uh, collaborating with nhsrc private clinics and hospital would be able to enter also government programs like the ayushman bharat and the pmssy how to enter the data we need to have some expertise in training at each step and the instruction manual and the training manual have been prepared what are the applications and benefits of this prescription soft we can identify prescription Uh, problems quickly corrective steps can be taken and it can provide inputs into training programs like the prescribing skills assessment online program that we run for interns and practitioners comparison across healthcare systems is possible trends in drug use disease incidence prevalence can be taken and it therefore can contribute to policy and practice uh, what about the future what would we do as version 2 of it we will incorporate standard treatment guidelines into it and use artificial intelligence for analysis so that besides various application we probably be able to detect early warning signals of in case of any major changes up we can provide it available to um, uh, indian states for their audit purposes and may be available to other countries too specialized areas such as tb anemia diarrheal diseases etc uh, would be also possible and in fact we are uh, starting to do that already i would like to specially acknowledge pushpender yashmin and tulasi from nims and also rakhi tripathi from rumc and jerry for their major contribution in developing this software and thank you all very much for your attention thank you so much ma'am uh, and thank you also for sticking sticking to time Uh, next on the agenda we have the chairperson dr vp kamboj uh, the chairperson of the rumc technical advisory group uh, who will share his uh, views and remarks on the software thank you sir over to you professor balram bharwa professor sabarin panda dr chatterji dr cherian friends from tag pis of the national use of medicine centers staff of icmr who has joined us today and other friends it is a great day for the uh, rumcs that this software has been developed by the total participation of dr nilma shri sagar major inputs from dr rao vishnu rao and his colleagues and contributions from the rational use of medicine centers final day has come when the press pre soft that is the prescription research software is going to be launched by the secretary dhr and dg icmr professor balram bharwa i am grateful to all the pis of the rational use of medicine centers tag members dr vishnu rao and his colleagues for spending so much time and coming over the teething problems which they experienced to reach on this day when we are going to launch dr nilma shir sagar has already highlighted the features of the uh, prescri soft so no, i am not going to say anything on them except expressing gratefulness to professor balram bharwa who took interest in the rumc activities right from day 1 that is in 19th february 2020 he participated in all the meetings of the rumc when they were held in new delhi and this has ultimately resulted in this software and i will request the icmr staff and their legal cell to get this software patented so that anybody who uses it uses it with the consent of icmr it becomes the permanent property of icmr and request everybody to use it fully particularly its features 
With these few words, I express once again gratefulness to the DGICMR and all other colleagues and expect that everybody who sees the software will provide input so that we are able to improve it further. The inputs during the demo was provided by Samir and Panda and that type of inputs will be coming so that the software could be refined. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you so much, uh, respected chairperson. Uh, next, we have Dr. Vishnu Rao, uh, who is the director of the National Institute of Medical Sciences, uh, because we, uh, they have been a very strong collaborator uh, and taking the lead in developing the software. So a few words from, regarding the journey of the development from Dr. Vishnu Rao. Thank you. Thank you very much. So respected Professor Balram Bhargava, um, Dr. Samran Panda, and Nabendu and the luminaries, like Professor Gupta, Dr. Kambos, uh, Dr. Sherzagar, ma'am, actually, she made us almost two to 300 meetings over this period. Though she has, she holds the stick, but it appears to us like a uh, carrot and she made such a easy for us to learn the things and do the software. And, uh, and Professor Malik is always with us. And first of all, I <coughs> want to uh, thank uh, the DGI CMR and the PAG for giving the opportunity to ICMR names and trusting us to give this uh, for this particular software. And actually, it has given us an opportunity, not only we are anyhow domain experts in statistics and IT, but it has also given the opportunity to learn many things about the prescription pattern of drugs and what is how the, the drugs are, will be prescribed. <coughs> A lot of inputs that we learned from them. That is, thanks for that. And the software has uh, its own unique in the sense that uh, our staff took a lot of uh, efforts, especially to incorporate the WHO um, uh, drug dictionary and ICD-10 classification. So we they worked hours and hours to incorporate that because that's the huge database that synchronized with the uh, uh, existing parameters. It took, it took us a lot of time. And uh, also ICD-10 classification, since we had the experience in CTRA, so that has been incorporated into this and ATC codes as well as NELM codes. So, and also the, the, um, the important of this package is that it is scalable also in time. And also it can be used for a real time analysis. And the two days before when we had the meeting with the additional DG, and he also suggested some sessions which can be incorporated like you know, uh, data visualization that is that should be there. And also the everyone's buzzword is that the artificial intelligence that also we want to incorporate in some parameters. And uh, we will want we want to integrate this with uh, artificial intelligence. And I also have some future not concerns, but uh, future what we have to do the sustainability of this. So it has to be sustained over a period of time. So we have given our inputs and what we require to the tag and tag kindly has agreed for that. And the updation of the software is up and periodically whenever there is a need. So this is not 100%. Any time we can uh, improve upon and we can change. So therefore, uh, these are the features and these are the future developments of this software. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity to ICMR NIMS. I take this opportunity to thank my staff, Dr. Tulsi Adhikari, Ashmin, Pushpendar. They worked very hard uh, to make it a uh, kind of a reality now. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vishnu, sir, for, for all those uh, uh, memories, for sharing those memories. N uh, next on the agenda, we have uh, remarks from Dr. Samiran Panda. Uh, so the addition uh, thank you uh, dr cherian uh, professor dr balaram bhargav uh, vishnubardhan rao dr nabindu chatterjee dr malik here in this room and all the dignitaries and the experts who are connected to the virtual platform today uh, while i was listening to this uh, it uh, uh, got me back in 1981 to 1983, we never read the preface or foreword those days in, in student life. You go uh, straight to the text because you have to pass the exam. Um, however, uh, the professor, a neurologist under whom I had my housemanship done, Professor Sandeep Bairi, made me read the foreword. <laughs> yeah, so he made me read the foreword because. He said that it's not enough only to read Hutchison's, you know, the practice of clinical medicine. You have to read the foreword. I thought, okay, this is one of the raggings that professors do to their students. And he made us read that sentence that he's a good doctor who knows how to treat. He's a better one who knows when to treat. 
and he's the best, who knows, when not to treat. And then during the ward round, if we have out of the lot thinking prescribed something, which we fail to show in the textbook, he would again make us read that. This particular initiative actually addresses the first stage and the third. How to treat is a, an expectation based on a standard treatment guideline. And if things go wrong, you have to get the train back on track. And it has multiple sites in the country. So I think that it's going to solve a great purpose. And the last one is about, he's the best one. Each one of us wishes to be the best one. Although we, we constantly leave, thrive towards it. We sometimes do not know when not to treat. And uh, Professor Sivsagar Nilimaji, she actually talked about the uh, mucomycosis, and that's due to application of medicines when probably it was not indicated, or if it was uh, prescribed and administered, it was done in a manner when steroid was given too early or too large or for too long a time. So inappropriate medication or to withhold the medication is so very important. That's my first point. In the best interest of time, I will keep my uh, uh, talk restricted to two more points, uh, and I'll stop there. Because one of my friends said uh, that never talk beyond three points because others won't remember. Neither would they care to even pay attention. The second point that I would like to make is, is my inputs that Dr. Rao was referring to. HIV AIDS was, came to the notice just by prescription audit because a particular medicine which was being prescribed in huge number to treat pneumocystis carinia pneumonia uh, raised that signal. So it's a red flag that one can you know, try see through a, an appropriate analysis, but that cannot afford to be done through committee meetings and you take time. So it has to be like a real time. So maybe whoever, it could be Jerin, it could be Dr. Chatterjee, I don't know, whoever, but there should be a signal mechanism that something is being prescribed in two uh, or inappropriate manner and in too much of frequency, which might be indicative of a disease. So that is the second purpose. Third, I will stop uh, by saying that uh, very recently we had to be involved, Professor Varga, myself and other experts had to be involved in the assessment process of the scientists of all the ICMR institutes. So I think if this initiative, which is a great initiative of public health importance is being undertaken, that needs to be written up in whatever form. It could be an uh, original article, but it should be done by the scientists here. And I'm particularly focusing on the early warning signal, which has great uh, deal. So publications coming out of it, it could be a letter to the editor, it could be a short communication, and it should be done by those scientists who are actively involved in it and are feeling so passionate about it. It's a, it's a great initiative. Thank you very much for this opportunity for sharing my thoughts and also to share a little bit of old story from 1981 to 1993. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for capturing the of, of the Ration Use of Medicine Center's uh, software. Uh, so the next we have the launch event uh, by the DDICMR. So, uh, So we have a login uh, ID and password, which the DG will use to log in. Uh, and thank you. So that was a successful launch. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, remarks, please. Thank you so much, Karen. Uh, 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 welcome and uh, thank Dr. Samiran Panda, the assistant DG, Dr. Uh, Nabindu Chatterjee, head of the Basic Medical Science Division. Uh, Dr. Kambod Chairperson, Professor Nilima Shir Sagar, Emeritus Scientist, and uh, Dr. Vishnu Vardha Rao, the Director of uh, NIMS. Um, along with the help from all our uh, uh, people present in this room, Dr. Malik, Dr. Tulsi, Dr. Anu, Dr. Saibal. So I think uh, I'd like to congratulate uh, all for developing this software. Uh, okay. But I have uh, one or two important points to make. One is that uh, this software should not should not become a policing tool. 
because the medical profession is under onslaught from everywhere, from everyone. So when I hear AI, I get a bit very frightened because uh, so, so I'm very careful with AI. So it should not become, it is a double-edged sword. Yes, uh, it may be wise to communicate to all medical colleges, to all their deans, to promote this software. Having said that, it should not become a policing tool. Uh, there has to be, it is a double-edged sword, so it has to be very careful. That is my first point. The second point is that uh, uh, we have to remember that uh, the learnings of the medical science standard treatment guidelines are important, yes, but they can't be sacrosanct. They have no legal bearing. Uh, standard treatment guide, they are guidelines, so they are guidelines, so they have to guide you. Having said that, the physician may prescribe certain medicines, which uh, would be minor deviations. We have to overlook them. We have to realize, unless they're leading to uh, uh, drug drug interaction, unless they're leading to ADR, as you see, or they're leading to AMR and, and serious issues, they should should be in some which way overlooked. That is, so it has to be a more uh, balanced sort of a software, uh, not uh, uh, not uh, two plus two is equal to four. Sometimes it can be. Uh, you have to realize that it, it has to be. Again, medicine is. A, and I always talk that is is not a deterministic science. So artificial intelligence can help, but cannot be the final answer. That is my second point. The last point that I want to make is that with the. the learning from this press software um, and the data collected from it, there should be some vision of getting some legislation done in the future for certain over-the-counter medicines, certain over-the-counter antibiotics, and how this learning from this translated to a white paper, and that white paper gives a policy decision to the government that these medicines are being overused, these medicines are being incorrectly used, and these medicines are responsible for promoting the epidemic of uh, uh, AMR as well as uh, acute drug reactions. And therefore, these needs to be, uh, there needs to be a legislation. And I have realized that uh, the government is in a unique position to pass certain legislations on the learnings of ICMR, uh, which are uh, which can be done quite easily by a simple gazette notification. So let us target a gazette notification on certain drugs, certain legislation, which we have always been wanting for several years. With the current situation, they will be here <coughs> in the Ministry of Health to get those legislations provided we are able to give by paper. So that is my request for future. And uh, I think uh, this is a novel thing. Uh, it is exciting, particularly for youngsters who are passing out to use technology uh, for uh, a prescription and correct themselves and, uh, and, and also give their views on what their learnings have been because uh, what medicine they have learned over four and a half years and during the internship, five and a half years, and then the post-graduation, uh, whether it be pharmacology, preventive medicine, medicine, or whatever, department another three years so it is eight nine eight years of learning which uh, we cannot be policed by a simple software so that is my only view and uh, i wish the software all the best and i'm sure it will be very successful thank you thank you so much sir for your for your uh, guiding light and and also capturing the the idea of the software in terms of uh, not being a policing tool and at the same time having uh, translations to policy and perhaps even to legislature. Thank you so much. Sir. So, uh, and, and another good thing is we are also sticking very much onto schedule. So the last item is the vote of thanks. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and, and the launch of this software, the prescription research software, Prescreesoft, is really an important day in the, in the course of uh, racial use of medicines in, in our country. And I thank uh, Professor Dr. Balram Bhargava, the DGICMR for making this possible through his uh, never-ending support. Uh, I would also like to thank Dr. Samiran Panda for his constant guidance and, and for sharing his vision for the software um, in, the, in the future, which we will 
try our best to incorporate. So thank you so much. Uh, we would also like to thank all the TAG members uh, who are, uh, Dr. Malik is here in person. Thank you so much for attending in person, sir. The chairperson, Dr. Kamboj, uh, all of the others who have joined online, uh, all the TAG members, including Dr. Shir Sagar, I see Dr. Y.K. Gupta has also joined. Thank you so much, uh, all the TAG members, for your constant support and for being the torchbearers of this activity. Uh, we have had numerous meetings in the past that has culminated in this launch. And, and as you would imagine, a software such as this needs a very strong software design team, which uh, Dr. Uh, Vishnu Rao has been very uh, kind enough to provide to us. We have his entire team who is attending uh, this meeting here physically. We also, uh, uh, I, I would be doing an injustice if I don't mention a few names of people who have been uh, very much uh, involved in the development of the software. This includes uh, Dr. Tulsi, Dr. Rakhi, uh, Dr. Suparna Chatterjee, Dr. Uh, Nabindu Chatterjee, uh, the head of the audition, Dr. Sandhya Kamath uh, from KEM, Dr. Jaya uh, from CMC, uh, and a lot more people who, who I cannot name for uh, need of more time. Uh, and uh, I also thank our IT support team who is, uh, you know, in, in these times when virtual meetings are the norm, uh, they play a very, very critical role. Thank you so much for all the help you've been uh, providing to us constantly. And uh, last but not the least, all the participants who've joined uh, online uh, through our social media uh, message and as well as the uh, PIs, co-PIs and the, uh, the team members at the various 22 RUMCs we have across the country. Thank you so much for all your support and your well wishes. We hope to take forward the software in a good manner. Thank you.